In this video, you will learn how to use a membrane matrix keypad. You should already be able to use GPIO pins as inputs to read the state of buttons, understand how to declare and reference arrays, and understand how to use for loops. Throughout this tutorial, I will be using this 4x4 matrix keypad, but the approach here can be used for a matrix keypad of any dimension. You might just need to figure out where each wire leads to. In the case of this keypad, the wiring is as follows. There are four pins for each of the columns, and also four pins for each of the rows. Later, when I connect this to the Raspberry Pi, to avoid confusion, I will connect the row pins to odd-numbered GPIO pins, and the column pins to even-numbered GPIO pins. And that's about it. The keypad has no internal circuitry, so now we only need to decide how we are going to write the program to read inputs from the keypad. First, we will attach the matrix to eight different GPIO pins. Next, we will set four column pins to output pins and set their outputs to low, or zero volts. We will set up each of the four input pins with pull-up resistors. We won't need to use additional physical resistors as we can set this up directly from the program. Since we are using pull-up resistors, the inputs are pulled high, so we will detect an input when it is pulled low. Thus, when a button is pressed, a column at a low voltage will hit one of the inputs, pulling that input low, indicating which button has been pressed. Well, this almost works, but it's flawed, and here's why. Let's say button 2 is pressed. Then the low voltage at pin 6 will be read by the input pin for the first row. Unfortunately, pin 1 has no way of knowing which of the columns was pressed. At best, input pin 1 can say that either 1, 2, 3, or A was pressed. But since all of the columns are at the same voltage level, it doesn't know where that voltage reading came from. With this in consideration, let's fix our plan. First, let's instead set all of the output pins as high. That means if any button is pressed, nothing would happen as the inputs are already set high. Now here is the key change. We will set the output pins low one at a time and cycle through them extremely quickly. In this way, when a low is detected, we will know which column was picked as only one column is low at a time. We're now ready to start writing the Python code. To start with, when dealing with the GPIO pins, we must import the relevant GPIO module and use set mode to indicate how we will make reference to the pins. The numbers, letters, and symbols of the keypad can be stored in a two-dimensional array. Later, we will reference each element by its row and column numbers. Also, Nano has colored the hash and everything after it read because it thinks it is a comment. This is a mistake on Nano's part as a hash sign in a string will not be interpreted as a comment. So just ignore this error. Two more arrays are used to store the GPIO pin numbers for the rows and columns. Using a for loop, each of the four outputs is defined and set high. The four row pins are also set up with a for loop, and each is defined as an input pin with a pull-up resistor. Our program will continually loop forever, waiting for the input keys to be pressed. Because of this, we should use a try accept statement. In the try block, we have the never-ending loop, where we will place our code. This will keep on going unless there is a keyboard interrupt, that is, until someone presses Control-C. At that point, the accept block will run, resetting the GPIO pins to their default values, and the program will end. We said in our modified plan that we will need to set each of the output pins to low, one at a time. This for loop goes through each of the output pins, first setting it low, checking each of the inputs, returning it back to high, and then moving on to the next output pin. For the inputs, we will also cycle through each of them. But in this case, we will use an if statement to check each one of them. If the input reads low, it must be a button press. So then we will print the button label for row i column j using the matrix variable. We're almost done, but this code will print the button's value as long as the button is held down. To prevent the button outputting the same key multiple times, a while loop will start after a button is pressed and will continue so long as the button is held down. In this way, the button value is only printed once. The pass command here says do nothing. It's just so Python knows what to do in the loop, which in this case is to do absolutely nothing. Okay, let's go give this a try. Let's take a moment and look at the wiring. Our four output pins are connected to these wires and they go directly into our matrix. For our four input pins, they first go to the breadboard, pass through a resistor, and then afterwards go towards the matrix. Now the only reason I've included these resistors is just as a measure of precaution. If you're not that big into safety, you could go with all eight pins directly into the LED matrix and everything should work fine. Okay, well, let's give this program a try. Okay, one, two, three. Yep, seems to work. Star, hash sign, let's try A, try D, 
Okay, looks like it's working. Now sometimes you might notice some double letters. There we go, I hit six and I did get double. And that could be from your finger just vibrating a little bit there. To deal with this, you could always add some wait time, maybe a tenth of a second, maybe a fifth of a second. Just put a time.sleep for that amount of time, and then you should be able to avoid those double inputs. Okay, well, I hope you enjoyed that.